The UK's food supply is facing a lot of challenges, from labour shortages to rising energy costs and climate change. Some really exciting technologies might be coming to the rescue though, as detailed in a report from the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology. So in this video we're delving into that report, to see why the UK's food supply is under threat, what technologies exist to help it, and what the obstacles are that are standing in the way of those technologies becoming widespread. Food is pretty vital. Fruit and vegetables especially, as they're essential for a healthy diet, so it's perhaps then no surprise that they're big industries as well. The value of UK produced fruit was about £1.8 billion in 2022, with the value for vegetables being just under £1 billion. However, the horticulture sector, of which fruit and veg is a big part, is facing a number of different challenges. Here in the UK, homegrown vegetable production is on the decline. Between 2021 and 2022, vegetable production decreased by 5.8%. Protected vegetable production, so that's those grown in greenhouses and polythene tunnels, fell for its seventh consecutive year, and the amount of land being used for this method of production fell by 11%. So to compensate for all this, imports for vegetables have risen by 3.3%. In addition, Brexit has resulted in difficulties in acquiring enough seasonal migrant labour, on which farms are reliant. Visa processing delays, as well as seasonal work not being categorised as high skilled under the new point system, has caused a lot of disruption with reports suggesting that there aren't nearly enough visas to cover what's needed. Imported food is facing its own challenges too. Climate change is already affecting a lot of areas that the UK imports its food from. For example, an especially cold and wet season in Spain, the country which the UK gets the most of its fruit and vegetables from, resulted in supply shortages in the UK in early 2023. Plus, as the UK implements new border measures since its departure from the EU, there are concerns that vehicle inspections could delay food. Not good when you want your food fresh. Across the board, energy costs have risen since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, limiting production. And of that which remains, supermarkets have dominated supply chains, severely narrowing profit margins for farmers in an effort to keep up with the consumer's demand for cheap food. So all of that together, it's fair to say that there are a lot of challenges right now. But innovations that can do any of the following things will probably help. Be that reducing system inputs like water, nutrients and energy, significantly aiding the workforce or reducing the size of the workforce, reducing greenhouse gas emissions or increasing sustainability. So the real question is, can technology do any of these things? Well, yes. Yes, it can. There are farming robots, there are specialized environments, there is AI and there is genome editing. All of these are fascinating and all of them are tackling different challenges. Here are just some of the highlights. The UK-based Lincoln Institute of Agrofruit Technology is developing various soft fruit picking robots like this. Different crops require different machines though, and these needs are so specific that there is even an asparagus harvesting robot called Sprout, developed by another company called Muddy Machines. Sprout and Muddy Machines, two great names. It's not just all about harvesting though. There are robotic systems for weeding, light-based mildew prevention, and over in Japan, there's even a drone that's pollinating flowers. Greenhouses can be fitted out with tech too, and they are worth it, especially considering that they can increase yield by 15 times per acre compared to field conditions. And where space is an issue, vertical farming is a method where you can stack shelves upon shelves of leafy greens and herbs to grow them, often under artificial light so that they can grow all year round, or even connect to hydroponics or aeroponics systems so they can have just enough water with very little going to waste. Switching gears, it's not always a case of growing more crops, but about protecting the crops that you already have. And there are tech solutions for that too. Some solutions monitor pests, like Slugbot, which monitors, you guessed it, slugs, and precisely applies chemical treatments. There's also SmapLab, an insect trap, complete with cameras and sensors. A more broader approach would be something like Crop Monitor Pro, which takes weather and climate data to optimise spray times for disease and pest prevention. Finally, there's genome editing, where genes are added, removed, or modified at precise locations in the genetic code of living cells. This does things like adding health benefits, making crops more resistant to pests, and increasing shelf life. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are a controversial approach, and frankly could warrant an entire video of their own. They certainly warranted their own post-note report, mainly because there are fears that they could compromise trust in the food system. They have a lot of regulation around them, but that might begin to get even more complex 
as regulators like the EU begin to distinguish between different genomic techniques. Nevertheless, there is a lot of technology and innovation in the food sector. It's really exciting. So, what's getting in the way? Why aren't all of these technologies widespread? Money. It's widely argued that capital investment is the biggest barrier to all of this right now. Most high-tech solutions like vertical farms and robotics have high initial startup costs. And with such low profit margins due to retailer pressure to decrease consumer prices, they're not so easily affordable right now. There are other challenges too. These technologies might not slide particularly neatly into place, and instead to install them you may need to upgrade existing infrastructure first. Things like putting charging points and storage in the right place. It's also a big commitment, so even if a robot that can do a job exists, farmers want to be sure that it can do it with the same or better efficiency than a human worker. On the point of human workers though, they'll need to be trained on how to oversee this technology that's being brought in, and that training will complicate the existing very narrow timeframes in which their seasonal work allows them to be around for. And if technology reaches the point where it's replacing humans, then that does raise some ethical questions about humans being put out of the job entirely. These aren't issues that emerging technologies of the past haven't had to overcome before. This technology represents a pathway that could be taken to make a huge difference in the future of this industry. Now, it's not a silver bullet, and nor is it the only path. Some critics argue that we should instead be taking a systems approach, where rather than technological solutions, you instead find policy solutions to address the challenges faced by those already working in the industry. Things like measures to improve pay and working conditions. That said, it's hard not to look at this technology and let your imagination go wild. Even if they don't entirely solve a lot of challenges, technological innovation is set to play a large role. So which things are closest to becoming a commercial reality? Well, DEFRA's review of automation in horticulture has concluded that the technologies most likely to be adopted soon are infield rigs, pack house automation, and optimized production, followed by autonomous crop protection and forecasting, and then selective harvesting. If you take anything away from this video, it should be that you can expect all of these things, from harvesting robots to teched out greenhouses to make a huge difference in the future, because they're possible now. The seeds for them are planted, now we just need to let them grow. That's all for this episode of Science Affairs. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. It's the best way to support the show. Otherwise, see you in the next video.